Hello, can you hear me? Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Saito Virtual Open Day. Hope everyone have a great weekend. Thank you for joining today's session. So we have three special guests today. The first one is our Dean for Saito Business School, Dr. Jenny Wong. Hi, Dr. How are you? Hello. Thanks, Fatia. Um, I'm very good. Uh, thanks for the invite for this session. Yeah. Okay. So the second one is our expert logistician, Major Chang, President of the Society of the Logistic Malaysia. Hi, Major Chang. How are you? Hello. Very good afternoon. Fatia and our Dr. Jenny Wong and our friend Alfie. Uh, I am very honored to be here with you Thank you. Okay. So the last speaker will be our expert from e-commerce industry, which is uh, Mr. Afik Ridwan, head of the strategic partnership and business development from Petronas. Hi. Okay. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, hi, Dr. Hi, Prof. And also, hi, Major. Thank you for the invitation. Okay, so today's topic will be the world of the logistic, your career of choice. So a career in logistic, what does that even mean? So you might have a so best. Today's topic will be the world I'm of the logistic, your career of choice. So a the career in logistic, what does that? You might have a basic understanding about this logistic industry, but definitely you might have a maybe a future understanding. This is the right session for you to join because we have the expert from the industry and also from opinion from the academic say uh, academic side. Okay, so audience feel uh, feel uh, free to ask the question during the session. Okay, so delivery the good and services at the right time, right place, right quality even at the right cost as the heart of the logistic and supply chain management i'm sure that every now that the the role of the logistic become more important every day especially during this pandemic e-commerce industry are booming due to the effect of the online shopping behavior most of people are, are feel free to buy online because of the uh, awareness of this COVID-19. So today we are discussing about the uh, uh, the function of the logistic and how actually the logistician become a uh, complement to the e-commerce industry. Okay, so the first question I, uh, I asked the major. So the Society of the Logistician Malaysia or known as Pertubuhan Pakar Logistic Malaysia is a Malaysia-based professional body. It's known for the logistician, including the supply chain specialist and transport planner. So Major, can you uh, share a little bit about the society and its role as a president of the society? Over to you, Major. Hi, uh, Fatia. Thank you very much. Uh... First of all, on behalf of the Society of Logistician Malaysia or Petubuhan Pakar Logistic Malaysia, I would like to express my very sincere thanks to Saito University College for inviting us to be here to share our piece of knowledge, uh, especially uh, to promote the profession of logisticians uh, via this particular platform. Right? Thank you very much. And many of you are well aware of uh, many professionals like uh, engineers, right, accountants, lawyers, medical doctors, or even uh, architects. But a lot of people do not really know about PACA logistics, or in English we call that, or we address that as logisticians. So um, one of the very main objective of uh, the Society of Logistician Malaysia, or Pertubuhan Pakar Logistic Malaysia, is to promote these professions to our fellow Malaysians, especially to our young generations. Right? As I mentioned on many occasions, when we all were small, 
our teacher or our guru asks us to write cita-cita saya. I would never expect anyone to write there. I would like to become pakar logistic one of these days, right? Or become a logistician one of these days. In fact, uh, we cannot blame them simply because they do not know. But they know what is iPhone, they know what is laptop, they know what is TV or whatever. But they do not know the story behind all these products, right? We need logisticians to do the coordinations, to do the planning and executions to make all these products uh, delivered to the intended destinations respectively. You see, so this is what we all must know. But of course, uh, we need a longer session to share how do we process or how do we coordinate. So in short, Log M, uh, we are here to promote and develop the professions of logisticians or Pakka Logistics in Malaysia. Thank you. I think you're you're muted, right, uh, Patia? You're muted. Okay. Thanks, Major. Yep. Dr. Jenny, what do you think about the importance of having the society for the logistician? Ah, thanks, Fatia. Good afternoon, uh, Major and Mr. Afik. Very happy to have both of you here. Um, so to answer Fatia's uh, question is, yeah, I think it's very important that, you know, um, in, in Malaysia, we have a society that actually take care, you know, um, of the um, the welfare and the well-being of the logistician. So apart from the CILT, which is more of the international, um, we have our LOGM, the Society of Logistician Malaysia. And as what Major mentioned earlier on, the role itself is, is very much in terms of giving the support system um, as well as um, nurturing that kind of um, knowledge or experience to the potential logisticians um, in Malaysia. And of course, um, a lot of people, they equate logistic with um, something that is um, very others. Yeah, like um, it's very hard um, and you, you have to actually go out, um, you know, and stand under the sun and all this. So that, that, uh, that, that is actually very um, conventional kind of thinking because um, if you talk about Lazada, if you talk about Shopee, yeah, I'm sure all of you, you know, even the audiences, they are very familiar with this, right? So these are actually part of logistics. And a lot of students, they do not understand this and they, they just have a different mindset of um, um, what is logistic. And I hope that, you know, with the assistance of um, Society of Logistician Malaysia and also the assistance, um, you know, from the institution such as Saito University, um, we can actually change that kind of uh, mindset of the students as well as the society or the public for that matter. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jenny. So, uh, from what the Dr. Jenny say about the current behavior of buying online through the Lazada, Shopee, and uh, all the online platform. So, Mr. Afik, from your point of view, how actually the importance of logistics and how it can complement the expansion of the e-commerce industry? Hi. Um, firstly, I uh before I start, I would like uh, to say thank you to Dr. Jenny and Tim for having me. Uh, again, this is the second time with uh, Saito University and also um, and hi to most legendary uh, person in the logistic industry, Mr. Major T.S. Chang. Uh, been, been heard about you but never seen you before. So I think this is the first time that we are, we are uh, meeting uh, together and also thank you to Ms. Um, Fatia. Okay, to, to to answer to your question about the how important the log, uh, logistic to the e-commerce. Okay. Logistic actually, it is very important for the whole uh, e ecosystem of e-commerce because when we're talking about the whole uh, ecosystem e-commerce, it's not only on the last mile delivery. So on the e-commerce, we have a lot of um, criteria in terms of logistic that um, is being um, taking care for the whole ecosystem of the logistic. So we have the first thing, we have the first mile. 
That is usually what they do on the first mile is like uh, pick up the item from the seller punya rumah, from the seller punya warehouse, or might be from the port like Port Klang, or might be from KLIA, or might be from the other port lah. The one that coming from the cross border item, okay. And then um, the same thing that uh, uh, happen and they don't want to pick up of method whereby people usually uh, do an economic method like uh, um, the home seller whereby they are using the draw off punya punya uh, method also is considered as first mile. Draw off method you can see a lot of uh, these days uh, MBE services. You nampak the Coleco, you nampak Seven Eleven with the Razor Plus. Um, this is considered as the first mile. Uh, and then another one layer is the line haul services. Line haul services usually we are talking about like from, uh, for example, right? Uh, I take example from Lazada punya warehouse that is at the USG one, going to the punya sorting center that is also in the USG one. So this that is the line haul services, and sometimes also from the sorting center also going to the 50 hub in the whole ecosystem of Lazada, also that line haul services. So if you're talking about the whole ecosystem of um, delivery for the um, e-commerce and also logistic is not only concentrated on the last mile uh, delivery. But a lot of people, so many uh, people thinking that delivery is only considered as the last mile services. But actually, if you look at the whole ecosystem, it's been like uh, open, like, you know, like um, you you are um, peeling an onion, you know, it's one by one or something because logistic is very unique. Uh, I, I uh, echo what uh, uh, Major T.S. Chang uh, mentioned before. Um, uh, in Indonesia, when we talking about logistic, right, they are considered as the third tier people that not so much doing well in their education. That is a wrong method, you know. Uh, yeah, for information, right, majority of people doesn't know, even though the last mile delivery people, the one, the, the one, the rider, um, the one, the uh, uh, driver, right, you know that they are earning more than 4,000 a month. Some of them earning 15,000 a month, you know, for example, like DHL punya last mile um, delivery punya driver, uh, Lazada punya driver. Um, I can see the pay slip minimum at 8,000 during the sales time, like 11, 11, 7, 7, 8, 8, you know, uh, Christmas, Chinese New Year, everything, they can earn almost 15,000 a month. So they are cannot to see as a consider as a people that as a third tier, uh, I mean, um, low class, you know, like people that not uh, educated because logistics is very unique. Because logistics is not only on the last mile delivery, as I mentioned before, even your expertise is needed in the cross border when you do a lot of regulations, punya, punya, uh, uh, um, uh, checking, uh, regulation, punya, punya, uh, uh, off boarding. Because this one, you need people from the logistic industry. You does, in the logistic industry, it doesn't mean that, for example, if I'm studying in degree in business administration, I cannot be an expert in logistics because logistics is very unique. That's why if you go like some of the university like uh, Pofmo University, um, uh, if you go to the some of the um, American university, logistics is considered as a science stream. But in Malaysia, logistics is co considered as art stream. It's totally different. It's considered a technical education in the States and also in Australia. And uh, in, in uh, Singapore also some of the education of the logistic right now, um, um, it, it is already considered as the um, uh, main, main heart of the whole ecosystem of the supply chain not only for e-commerce and also for uh, all of the, the um, um, other part of the supply chain, like, you know, like the brick and mortar and everything. So if you're talking about how important logistics for e-commerce, it is very important. That's why you can see Lazada having their own fleet, Shopee having their own fleet. Um, uh, coming soon, to be honest, I'm telling you right now, Petronas is coming out with their own e-commerce. We also having our own fleet right now. It's under me, Logistica uh, Petronas. So we are running the business for having uh, the first logistic company in uh, inside Petronas. So we are build up the ecosystem for the Pudo services. And then soon we're going to have our e-commerce by next year, inshallah. Yep. Hand over to you, Fatia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Afik. Okay. First of all, congratulations to Petronas and congratulations to you be part of the Logistica team. So good luck for the, fut uh, for the future. So uh, we have the first question from the... Uh, audience to the major okay can you can you see the question major uh, you are muted major maybe fatia you can read out the question for major yeah. thank you okay. so sir is the benefit of joint foundation and diploma of logistics yeah of course uh 
Okay, thank you for the questions. Uh. Um, for example, in our school system, we all learn from UK, right? In Malaysia, uh, regardless of whatever system, basically, we take uh, UK as a reference, right? Um, including our legal system, our engineering system, our architecture system, including even logistic uh, systems, right? So even education as well. So education from primary school to secondary school, then to our tertiary education, even the, like what uh, Afid mentioned, uh, that actually we must know a lot, you know, especially in logistic, uh, transport and supply chain area, right? So we cannot just jump into logistic program uh, from the bachelor or master's or even doctorate. So in order for you to get uh, detached uh, to go into the area of logistic education, of course, you need to have your foundation, right? Your foundation is to prepare you to learn at least uh, communication, right? Uh, then the business English, right? And all this, right? So in logistic and transport or even supply chain, we need to do a lot of communication. Bear in mind, yeah, when it comes to logistics, we do not just deal with our friends in the village or in our town. We have to get ourselves prepared to deal with at least regional, regional basis, right? And if your company has grown from regional to world, then that means in short, you have to go into the world. And if you are able to go to the world, you have to ask yourself, which area, which rules you have to follow? As I mentioned to you before, that uh, if let's say we do not want to grow our sector or grow our country to the next level to globalization, we need not to go for education, right? So, but because of this particular area of specialization, we really need to know. So how are we going to tap into this particular area of specialization? Of course, we have to learn from foundation. Foundation is a must. Uh, which include even our, if you want to go for medical sciences, you have to go for foundation in science. If you want to go for business, of course, you have to go for foundation in, in arts. Then, of course, in this case, if you have the uh, foundation in logistic, that would be better, right? So, in fact, uh, some university in Malaysia, and of course, I agree with Arvid, uh, uh, in some university, of course, they, they have, uh, they classify logistic as science stream, especially elsewhere in, uh, I mean, outside of Malaysia. In Malaysia, of course, we treat logistic as part of the commerce or business stream. But in fact, one of two university in Malaysia, they have also classified logistic as science stream and they park uh, logistic program under their faculty of science. And of course, I'm not here to promote uh, the rest of the universities or institutions. But uh, for sure, some of the programs in Malaysia has been class classified as science stream. Right? Because uh, Long M have visited many institutions and universities and we have actually read through the program as well. Right? So, of course, uh, in order for you to get yourself uh, prepared to go to the next level, of course, you need to have foundation, then followed by your diploma. And of course, if your whatever situation permits, then you go for your bachelor, followed by master's, then finally your doctorate. And for your information in logistic transport and supply chain, we do have bachelor, master's, as well as doctorate level, right? Not only in Malaysia, but uh, almost everywhere in the world. And one thing I would like to point out before I forget, eh? you see, um, for example, Singapore, I, I like to quote Singapore. Singapore is such a small country, right? A small country, the size is about Penang, is about Penang, right? But they are now quite popular or is very popular in the world. And most of the world know about Singapore. Why? Part of the reasons because of logistics, because they are having the second largest seaport in the world. 
right? Uh, so you can actually go through, uh, and we have uh, our map. Those developed countries, why they are developed? Because they emphasize and they focus on logistic transport and supply chain. That's why today they are developed. So of course, Malaysia, we are doing our part. And two ports of ours are classified as world class as well. For example, Portland is around 14 in the world and our port of Tanjung Perlepas is about 17 in the world. So we are on the way. So we have to bear this uh, statement in mind that if you want our country to be developed, first of all, we must develop our logistic, transport and supply chain sector. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Major, for answering the question. So audience, feel free to ask the question because we have the giveaway voucher grab for those uh, uh, asking the question. For those that are asking the question, can you leave uh, the details on the comment? Okay. So uh, Dr. Jenny, from the academic point of view, what is the benefit for students of joining foundation, uh, joining foundation and diploma of logistics? Okay. Um, so if you're talking about um, joining the foundation or uh, diploma at Saito Business School, uh, sorry, at Saito and um, at the Prime School of Integrated Logistics. Now, um, not many of, um, I think, viewers or audience know that um, we are actually the one-stop one centre for logistics. So probably major when you come over, I think next um, next month, I think pretty soon, you will know what I, I'm talking about when I say it's a one-stop centre. We actually have our sister company who is also in logistic, um, operating in logistics. So our students are not only just learning by the book. So we give them uh, in terms apart from internship, all right? We don't talk about internship. Internship is a must. So we are talking about practical sessions. So for every semester, our students um, probably may not be at the foundation level, but diploma level, yes, uh, we have the work integrated learning. So we will actually bring our students for practical sessions with our sister company and our sister company actually have the logistic um part you know supply chain and all this so it it, it is actually a one-stop center so the students can actually learn the knowledge from the book and apply it immediately through the practical sessions that we have with the students for these um logistics course. yeah okay thank you dr so, uh, Mr. Afi, based on your experience in the e-commerce, what are the things that graduate can look forward if they are embarked on their e-commerce journey? And any tip for the student to kick start their career in the e-commerce? Okay. Um, thank you, Patia. So, uh, before I'm uh, answering that question, right, I just want to echo what um, Major Chang uh, mentioned before about the uh, education in the um, logistics, right? For information, um, there is a lot of people doesn't know actually. Uh, the whole ecosystem of Malaysia, we are lack of professional logistician. For information, okay, um, this is a fact. Uh, that's why kalau you pergi pada data under the um, uh, jabatan perangkaan, already mentioned that Malaysia lack of professional logistician. We're talking about everything from transport, cross border, uh, last mile delivery, and everything. Reason why, because this is a major concerning of the whole ecosystem of the Malaysia punya ecosystem. <laughs> Number one is, reason why, because for information, ramai tak tahu Malaysia actually, the positioning for the next direction and the 10 years is to become the regional hub for distribution. That's why we have IKEA, the most biggest IKEA um, distributor center is already moved in Malaysia and already stated in the um, uh, port plan right now. So the whole ecosystem of IKEA right now, people that are buying uh, item from IKEA from Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, China, everything is coming through from our distribution hub and also warehouse this is in Port Club. Ramai tak tahu benda tu. So IKEA is quite big. Okay. Same goes with Daiso. So Daiso closing down all, all of their distribution center dekat, dekat Jepun, they move everything in Malaysia, also in the Port Club. So Daiso is already doing that. Tiandi also the same thing, uh, spare part for distribution center. So this kind of thing because of we are keep on booming, 
we have a lot of people coming in you know um dhl also is already start to uh, uh, bringing uh, a lot of new uh, incentive coming in you know uh, for the ev punya um uh, distribution and everything so i believe we are having a very critical stage whereby we have a few numbers of professional logistician um that one i'm talking about the dry goods i'm talking about the thing that uh, normal item that people buy but another one that people doesn't know that in term of cold chain services cold chain with housing cold chain transport we have only a few numbers of uh, players that is less than five actually that is very professionally and this one also is become a bad luck for the uh, the whole industry uh, not only for the e-commerce but also for the brick and mortar so brick and mortar we talk about restaurant like old town mcdonald and everything so they have a very limited kind of um, resources for the cold chain services so tak ramai orang boleh buat cold chain services because of what because we don't doesn't have a professional in the logistic especially for the cold chain services so this kind of thing i think is a bit critical um to having a professional certificate uh, to having a diploma uh, foundation uh, certified as a logistician i think is very important with the current stage of our country uh, moving ahead to become the next regional hub for um distribution also for the warehousing lah um for information like alibaba sianyo is already um, open up in the KLIA, also having issue whereby we are having issue uh, to get a people that is professionally having that um, um, industry knowledge about the logistic okay um talking about to your question going back to your question um um uh, i'm sorry the question is about the e-commerce right sorry uh-huh. yeah it's talking about e-commerce so um is it about the logistics sorry i forget about the question can you repeat the question okay hey, sure so uh based on your experience that in in commerce so hmm. what are the things that graduate can look forward if they are embark in the e-commerce journey okay um okay uh as as already uh, mentioned just now we have a limited kind of um, um resources for the you know, for the decision right so in the e-commerce is very interesting so e-commerce is not only on the last degree so uh, e-commerce ni for example in the uh, let me speak on behalf like macam when i was in the lazada before so the whole ecosystem of logistic is not only uh, we talking about on the transportation only so if you're going for e-commerce a lot of position that you can explore it's not only for transportation um uh, last mile delivery but you can looking at warehousing management when we talking about warehousing management it's not you are become the guard for the warehouse no it's talking about the whole ecosystem of the warehouse you need somebody to be uh, very very important having any knowledge how to manage the in and out the flow of the item that coming out from the warehouse because once you are screw up with the, the whole uh, ecosystem of the warehousing so the whole backlog of the delivery will be become a disaster for the last mile delivery for the e-commerce so when you embark your position um your career in the logistic especially in the e-commerce you're not only looking at last mile you're not only looking at transportation you're not looking at only fleet management you're not looking at only warehouse management but at the same time also very very important also very critical part is the expert for the cross border item ramai tak tahu sebenarnya um the place for you to make money actually you can become the cross border agent because become a cross border agent is very huge kind of money ramai orang tak tahu because you are the one that make sure the item been released from the custom and you also make sure that all the item is already uh, been follow the guideline of the um, uh, regulation this one you can take example like macam uh, do you know this is one uh, startup company they call janio janio and also like do you everything they are not concentrate on the transportation but they only concentrate on the fulfillment that is on the delivery item especially for the cross border item so i think um, going for the e-commerce um uh, uh, uh industry especially to become a logistician in the e-commerce is very huge kind of way that you can uh moving forward number one is uh macam like cakap tadi lah last mile delivery fleet transport warehousing cross border um uh supply chain management apa lagi um um operation um uh management when you talk about operation is not only manage uh, the fleet but uh, the whole ecosystem like pudu services uh might be big, uh, operating the hub and something so e-commerce is very interesting and sometimes also they need somebody um, to be the guideline and also to, to be the front line for example if let's say we are launching for this product we are launching for this item we are launching for this category how the logistic gonna looks like so sometimes you also become the consultant 
for that kind of product that been been um, released and also been uh, introduced for the new uh, industry for the e-commerce. So to having a career in the e-commerce also uh, also logistics is very interesting, very very interesting, because you're not doing one thing, but actually you're doing a lot of things actually. Yeah, that's all from me. Thank you, Mr. Afi. It's a good tip for the student to kick start their career in e-commerce and logistics. So uh, we have another question from the student. Okay, uh, Major. So at the moment of the pandemic, will the logistic face more challenges? At the moment, the pandemic will logistic more face. Uh, I remember sometime last year when our government uh, announced or declared Malaysia uh, un uh, under MCO, right? Uh, movement control order uh, sometime in March, if I'm not mistaken, should be around 18 of March, right? 2020. And a lot of people were also got a shock uh, because uh, almost everyone was asked to stop operating including logistics. At first, we thought that um, logistic business would also have to be uh, shut down because of this MCO. So within a few hours, we got to know that it, after referring to the articles or the statements made by the government, they all also mentioned that uh, logistic, uh, in fact, uh, is part of the essential services uh, under the Act. So that means, in short, uh, uh, logistic business can operate, continue operating uh, even under MCO, regardless of MCO or EMCO or whatever uh, basis, lah, right? So logistic is classified as part of the essential services. So that means logisticians or professional logisticians is allowed to work throughout this uh, MCO. So um, whether our business uh, has stopped or being affected, the answer is no. In fact, the uh, logistic business, especially maritime uh, shipping, we call it shipping in short. Uh, I believe uh, Dr. Jenny and Faktia, you're aware that uh, actually my background is from maritime logistics. Uh. So uh, especially for maritime logistics, in fact, uh, the business has grown uh, significantly. Uh, we, we have uh, a lot of volume and now we have two main issues. The first problem is shortage of space, right? Number two is shortage of equipment, that means containers. So from there, you know, uh, this is not uh, only uh, in Malaysia. I'm talking about worldwide, uh, especially from China to US, uh, China to US. You see China, uh, I'm not trying to promote China here. But actually, if we look at the logistic uh, flow out of the top 10 ports in the world, in fact, China has top 7 ports in the world. That means out of the 10, they have 7. So whether uh, good or bad uh, or not, uh, we have to look at this particular index. We have to look at uh, the volume from China because they are having 7 out of 10. Right, I'm talking about the world world ranking in terms of volume. So, uh, just to cut the story short, is that uh, logistic would never be disappear, would never be disappear, and in fact, logistic may be invisible to a certain extent, but for sure it is indispensable under all circumstances. So you don't have to worry if you are part of the world of logistic transport supply chain. Memang you boleh dapat makan. You don't have to worry at all. My answer is you don't have to worry at all. Right? So even the MCO, this is the right time for us or for you all to do the testing. Right? Whether can this particular area of profession can survive or not? The answer is boleh. Uh, can still... Uh, so far. Huh? Okay, thanks. Um, I think I I agree with um, Major in in that uh, in that sense because um, interestingly, I think uh, last two weeks 
I think uh, Fatia and I, we met with one of the uh, speaker, our expert talk. So she just established her own logistic company. So I was asking her, I said, um, how's the business, you know, um, with the pandemic, you know, since 2020. Then interestingly, she mentioned, um, actually, my business have, have actually grown um, since the pandemic happened. So the pandemic actually helped her uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, growing her business in the, uh, in the logistic industry. So I think um, that should answer the, the question because um, in terms of the pandemic or, or in terms of a difficult situation that we are in, um, we will try to always look at how to turn the, the threat of this uh, pandemic into an opportunity. Uh, some people will see it as such, um, then they excel, and some people may not see it as such. So that's that's differentiate um, why certain people are able to actually overcome the challenges, especially during the pandemic. So, um, of course, the other example will be you see the booming businesses, um, you know, uh, all those uh, Shopee business owners, Lazada business owners, they, they are actually making a lot of money. I have an ex-student of mine. Uh, she studied business. She has an online um, business in um, Shopee. And she is easily uh, making a lot of money, five figures easily every month. And she is asking me, uh, Dr. Jenny, why are you still in academician? <laughs> you know, those kind of things. So I, I, I was just telling her, I said, well, I think it's passion that I have you know, in order to stay in this uh, academic education line. Uh, yeah, so that's what I would like to share. Yeah, over back to you, Fatia. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jenny. I think uh, today is very great uh, discussion because we have uh, academic uh, option and we also have the uh, industrial expert. So, uh, Mr. Afi, at the early of the 2020, the pandemic has been spread across the world and affected most of the business, but we can see the we can see that the e-commerce industry are booming. So, uh, from your point of view, is that the factor why the patronas are looking into open up their e-commerce business? Okay, um, it's very interesting, punya punya um soalan. So, um, to be honest, reason why that patronas are doing this e-commerce. Actually, it's been asked from the government for quite some time, actually. Uh, government already asked uh, whether how Petronas can, can help the whole uh, ecosystem of uh, MSME and also the uh, SME because with the current network that we have uh, for the petrol station, so the whole petrol station, our aim is we want to turn around to become a poster status punya punya center lah. Because we know that like uh, Petronas, you can get it uh, anywhere. So you can get in the rural area, you can get in the urban area, even even in the um, even in the sub uh, urban. So this is one of the reasons why Petronas is been uh, asking by the government uh, to to look at uh, at the logistic business and also at the uh, uh, e-commerce. So we are coming over. Uh, we are starting first with our logistic because we want to make sure that our logistic ecosystem are very strong to make sure that we can uh, unlock all those petrol stations to become the next uh, postal services consider macam post office and then when it's already strong and then we already start for the e-commerce lah. So e-commerce we're going to start first with the product of from the Mesra and then we start uh, also with the merchandise from Petronas, Formula One, MotoGP and everything and also for the Britain item lah. Okay, um, I think I just want to add on um, to the question about the do the pandemic um, will be effect the whole logistic industry. Uh, to be honest, jawapan dia tidak. Reason why? Uh, for information, Prasarana Berhad also launching an express company soon. So you know Prasarana Berhad, right? The one that own the LRT, MRT, bus line, Penang Ferry, um, apa lagi? Um, BRT, yeah? so banyak the whole ecosystem of the transportation. So if you can see, right, transportation, we're talking about Prasarana, why they want to do logistic? What they want to do is they want to maximize the whole ecosystem of the LRT, MRT, uh, bus line, BRT, um apa lagi dia punya ferry line to become the trunk um to become the trunk road and also the line hall services for other services for the like 3pl company for example like us like macam uh, major champion company or something like that to to help them to do to, to do the delivery immediately because the schedule of the um putra uh, uh lrt mrt everything is very uh, easy to be predict lah 
because the timing is very consistent. So that's why they also launching an express company. So if you're talking about the whole ecosystem, uh, the logistic uh, industry is being affected during the pandemic. My job is because of this pan pandemic, logistic carrier become the most proof pandemic carrier among the other industry. This is by a fact. Um, you boleh tengok kan, Grab also start to um, bring uh, bringing up the Grab Express to become the next year. Previously, Grab Express is only the third year. So you have only Grab Food and also the e-hailing. Food Panda also coming up with the Food Panda Express. Uh, wanted to do the delivery for the item. Um, you can see a lot of new startup coming in, uh, starting up a business for the logistic company for the Express. And, and also because of that, um, government also came out with a new ruling. Uh, this is no class A, B, C coming up soon. There will be NUI, a new class of category, whereby certain of category, every new license need to have a PUDO. So PUDO is one of the thing that been needed uh, currently in the industry, not only for the merchant, but also for the customer. Because usually, apa yang jadi during the pandemic time, people tak dekat rumah, you know, mungkin-mungkin um, uh, kerja, kerja, uh, kerja kat luar or something. So um, having the field delivery of the item, ataupun tak ada kat office. So this this PUDO actually is, uh, is already embedded in the new ruling of the government. Whereby government wanted all this last mile delivery company, transport company, wajib kena ada PUDO for you to get the license of the last mile delivery lah for the express and so the courier services. So PUDO actually the one that something that also benefit for the customer because customer kalau tak ada kat rumah, they can go to like to, to the nearest petrol station, Petronas, came and pick up. So tak ada lagi issue. So currently we can see banyak PUDO like for example MBE services, Colette Co, Petronas is doing that, Nija Van also doing that, um, 7 Eleven also right now you boleh pick up your you pay item. Kalau you buy the item dalam dalam uh, dalam Lazada, if let's say you doesn't want uh, people to come to your house ataupun you rasa um, you takkan ada for that period, then you can ask and also assign the item to be delivered to 7 Eleven uh, using the Razer uh, parcel punya services lah. So I think uh, yes, this 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 pandemic make the um, e-commerce logistic become much more stronger. And trust me, even though the pandemic will be end another two years or, or might be three years uh, down the road, it will be the most interesting industry whereby everyone start to looking at it. And as I said before, mungkin Malaysia punya ecosystem pun akan berubah. No more art stream, no more business stream. It's become science stream. It's already become engineered because after this, you have a lot of logistics using AI and everything. Um, for example, like Mr. DIY also is already starting doing that. Mm. And ramai yang tak tahu yang Mr. DIY punya warehouse is using robot. So I think this is something that, that um, we can explore because logistic industry is very, very interesting. Um, where I can say this pandemic is make people become eye opener for the whole ecosystem of the logistics and also for e-commerce. Yep, that's all from me. Okay, thank you. I think it's a good news for us because uh, after this we can just drop off our parcel dekat uh, petrol station because Petronas are doing that. It's a good news. It's a good move for the Petronas. So we have a uh, last question from the uh, audience. Okay, I think this question is uh, suitable for the major to answer. What company have the logistics? Can you hear me? Ah uh, yes. I can hear because the uh, the questions has blocked the the buttons. You know. But anyway, it's all right. So what company uh, has uh, logistics? Uh, I would say, you see, in Malaysia, part of the responsibilities of our government, uh, they go outside, right? They go overseas. They go abroad. Um, with one intention to bring in MNC multinational companies to bring in FDI, foreign direct investment. They would like uh, foreign companies to come into Malaysia and set up their plants, to set up their manufacturing sites, all this, right? So why must those MNC or FDI come to Malaysia? We must first of all tell them that uh, we have the logistics system. And like, for example, Afid uh, already mentioned, we have the domestic uh, distribution, we have the domestic logistic uh, sector, right? But we must not uh, just restrict ourselves to domestic uh, logistic system, but we must tell them that we have the regional as well as global system, 
right? Where we can link our domestic to the regional as well as to the world. So which company has logistics? I will have to tell you that uh, almost every company has logistics department, uh, especially those MNC, multinational companies. Uh, you can see actually a lot of such uh, companies in Malaysia, uh, in our industrial estates, uh, that uh, a lot of um, international companies, why they are here? Because of our logistic system, right? Without the logistic system, they can't have their factories or manufacturing sites here in our country, right? We must not forget how do they bring in the raw materials? How do they send out their semi-goods, semi-finished goods or their finished goods, right? For sure, you need to have logistic department, right? In almost every single company, like even your sundry shop. Of course, we are not talking about sundry shop business model. I'm talking about a bigger version, like at least a factory, uh, MNC. You can see a lot, a lot of opportunity. Uh, uh, in logistic, uh, transport and supply chain sector. And you see in the northern Malaysia today, we have a lot of uh, solar panel factories, right? And what uh, Afid also mentioned, cross-border, right? We have the cold chain. And for your information, the Society of Logistician Malaysia or LOGM, we have a lot of such uh, expertise uh, within our organization. So in case uh, you, any business or whoever would like to seek uh, any professional advice, especially in the area of cold chain, as well as uh, cross-border, uh, Block M is always uh, ready to serve and is ready to, to share our piece of knowledge and experience in these two mentioned uh, sectors. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Major. I think uh, we have another last question for Mr. Afik. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, good afternoon, Chia Afik and everyone. My question is RR 4.0, the artificial, the AI, and also the blockchain. Will it positively or negatively impact the whole e-commerce and also logistics industry? For information, you're going to become much more interesting. It will be positive. It's not going to be negatively. Um, you have to remember, um, AI is not going to replace you uh, in terms of logistics. Reason why? Because AI are helping you, especially in the warehouse management, to have a better, smoother, and also a better kind of um, um, quality of management. Because when you manage a warehouse, it's not something like a storeroom. Warehouse is very big. For example, if you go to Port Klang, uh, you go to uh, Lazada Pin Warehouse at the uh, KLIA, or, or maybe you can go to uh, IKEA Pin Warehouse, the place is very huge. From one end to go to one end, sometimes you need to use a motorbike, or maybe you need to use an um, electrical bike because it's very big. So you just imagine that with, with uh, that kind of size, that this is very big, right? It's very huge. How you want to manage the ecosystem of the um, um, sorting and also for the management of the item. So sometimes using the AI is the most suitable time for you and also the most suitable uh, scientific item that we can use to make the manage for the whole warehouse ecosystem. Um, because it's not easy, you know, because 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 every item has have, have, uh, um, different code. Some some item, they have a different kind of uh, uh, volume. Sometimes the weight also is very heavy. So that's why I like people to find um, uh, um, and an item in a warehouse sometimes is very hard. Like like uh, previously, right? When you're having a big uh, warehouse for you to find an item, that's why sometimes you said barang tu tak ada, barang tu hilang. Tapi sebenarnya barang tu ada, it's just misplaced, mislook. So that's why you need uh, AI technology because AI technology helping everything, especially for the logistic, much more easier, uh, uh, smooth, and also much more quality of management. Uh, that one, we're talking about the warehouse management. But if you're talking about like in terms of last mile delivery, um, you can uh, Google um, um, a video coming from the um, Sino network and also Lazada Pay Warehouse. We are using uh, AI technology whereby the way that we are sorting the item, not like the other typical uh, 3PL company or might be like a courier services whereby it's doing it manually. So you need a lot of people. If you go like post Malaysia, right, you can see it's a lot of um, uh, manual labor. That's why sometimes you tengok barang you lambat sampai, you know. Um, you buy the item, for example, it's very simple. Like you buy the item hari ini katakan, 
from the seller kat Bangi wanted to send to you in 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 uh, for example uh, Damansara for example okay from Bangi to Damansara usually in in um, in, in like um, um, I mean typical minded people say besok hari ataupun dua hari boleh sampai lah but because of that using a manual kind of sorting some of the query services uh, you can see a lot of bad luck you know uh, i think i think that one you can see in, in the social media i think uh, you know which which uh, company kan you can see a lot of bad luck sometimes it become gunung because it's not using an ai technology it's using a manual kind of uh, technology so bila dia pakai manual so that's why dia punya barang lambat sampai whereby if you using it an uh, ai the technology the way that they are sorting they just put the item in the conveyor belt everything is a bit sorting and also bit 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 uh, captured by the camera and also the x-ray so it's go directly to the postcode so when it coming directly to the um, to the end uh, 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 machine right they already put everything in a cage or might be in uh, uh, in the um, uh, side box so when you already put in a cage with one uh, uh, postcode so it it make much more easier for your last mile delivery boy or the rider ataupun driver to do the delivery um, effectively lah so there is no uh, issue of sampai to hub barang barang like you know like uh, miss sort ataupun hilang something like that. that's why ai technology is very important for the um, um, for the logistic industry and also for the uh, warehouse management and for information um, one of the regulation by the new government for the new license uh, previously the the class abc right now the they call the class uh, nui Selain pada Pudu, they need to invest also for technology. So every company need to invest for technology, especially for the AI technology for the sorting. Reason why uh, government doesn't want to have any more the issue of people having the backlog of delivery whereby sampai ketunggu sampai dua bulan, tiga bulan, something like that lah. So that's why we need the AI technology. Um, uh, if you can see like macam Pening also, under the Pening Digital, they are heading for AI technology for the logistic. So they are trying to work together with a lot of logistic company in the Pening. Uh, I still remember like much PKT logistic and everything. So I think I think um, it is very important. Don't worry, AI will not replace you, but actually AI making you punya kerja much more easier as as a logistician also for uh, warehouse management. In terms of quality, you have a very shortened time for you to do the the the, the uh, management. Um, same goes with us. Um, even though we are very small, even though we are coming from the four uh, from the four uh, five hundred company, but we are still small because we are a unit. We only thirty of us. Uh, for the whole ecosystem of Petronas, kita ada 30 orang je, tak besar, we are very small. We are also uh, heading to using a technology whereby the way that we are sorting and everything, we are using um, um, not a full fledged of, of AI, but but still um, we are using technology whereby we make sure that you pay delivery hari ni, the, the, the merchant drop the item to us, tomorrow morning we're going to get your item. So our SLA is 24 hours delivery on the next day delivery. So that's why we are still using the uh, AI technology. Yep, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Afiq. So, um, Major, as a pakar logistic, what maybe you can add something about the uh, the same question from the audience? Major, you are unmute. Okay. It is always my pleasure to see something. So a lot of people are actually asking the same questions. Whether technology, right, uh, can replace uh, professionals, right? So my answer is impossible uh, to replace professionals. For example, uh, lawyers can technology replace uh, professional lawyers? Cannot. We cannot expect Robert to go to the court and fight for the case, right? So can we expect uh, accountant be replaced by Robert or the technology? Uh, I said, uh, yes, part of the work, yes, but for sure you need someone to check and verify. So you still need a professional. So similarly, when it comes to uh, logistic transport and supply chain sector, so can technology or Robert replace professional logisticians? The answer is definitely no. Of course, uh, like what Arvid uh, mentioned, we need technology to facilitate our work, to make our work uh, more easier or more smoothly, right? Because we must not forget, we are dealing with the world. We do not just zoom in to our own area. So we need to look at our international commercial terms. We cannot expect 
Robert to look at the international commercial terms. And we must not forget, apart from production, apart from warehousing, apart from your physical distribution, you must not forget our Hagyu rules, Hagyu Wisby rules, Rotterdam rules, Hamburg rules. And all this, we need the professional to look at it. Right? We cannot expect uh, the robot or the technology to look at all those rules. Right? And in case you have dispute, just like construction sector, just like your uh, whatever area of specialization, we have dispute. We cannot expect technology or the robot to solve the dispute for us. That's why in the area of logistic, transport and supply chain, apart from doing the planning, coordination and management, we must also carry out mediation, adjudication as well as arbitration in our area. That's why we need PACA logistics. We need the professional logisticians to, to tap into this particular area not only the production, warehousing, physical distribution, transportation, or whatsoever. We must not forget mediation, adjudication, as well as the arbitration. You see, for every single shipment, for every single shipment, eh, after your shipment, you have the bill of lading. And bill of lading, usually they put there very clearly. In case of any dispute, we go for arbitration rather than we go for any litigation so we we cannot expect uh, robert to go for litigation we cannot expect robert to go for mediation on our behalf so that's why in short uh, professional logisticians would not be replaced under all circumstances but of course we need technology to support and facilitate our workflow in a sense Okay, thank you, Major. So, Dr. Jenny, do you have uh, something to share? Uh -huh. All right, thanks, Fatia. Um, I think we come to the near um, end of our session. So, I would like to share a bit of uh, information on the Prime, the School of Integrated Logistics um, from Saito University uh, College. Yeah. So um, let me know whether you can see my slides, my screen. Are you able to see this? Yes, Dr. Okay, good. All right. So at Saito University College, um, we have a school which is um, called the Prime School of Integrated Logistics. And we have two um, programs specifically cater for the um, growing um, career opportunities and pathway for students, which is in the logistic. So we have the Diploma in Logistic Management and we have the Bachelor of Business combining both the logistic management as well as the e-business. Because as mentioned by, um, you know, Major and Mr. Afik earlier on, the e-business or, or the e-commerce, the growth of it is, is actually... Uh, tremendous. So that's why we are catering for um, the upcoming uh, programs, which is very, very inclined for the students, yeah, when they actually go out and work. Um, all right. Um, so, sorry. Um, these are the uh, career prospects, yeah, that students can expect uh, when they actually graduate from a logistic kind, uh, logistic course, yeah. So you can actually, this is uh, the starting um, starting career. And of course, when you actually gain much of the experience and so forth, you can actually move down from a specialist to the manager level and after that to the, um, you know, higher level of the management. Yeah, so we have the procurement analyst, you have the shipping specialist, you can be the warehouse, you know, supply chain associate. You can even be the e-commerce specialist as well. And we also have the halal uh, logistic uh, module in our both our diploma and uh, bachelor program. So this is to cater for those who are actually interested um, in taking part of these as their specialization. So we have halal logistics as well. 
Um, all right, just sharing with you, this is our upcoming um, industry expert talk. So we have um, constantly encourage our students to be engaged with the industry. So both Mr. Afik and Major have already spoken or shared their knowledge in the industry expert series. So the upcoming one will be um, Mr. Julian Mio. So he's a managing director for DHL. And he will be sharing the sessions um, uh, in the topic of the future ahead in logistics and e-commerce. So it will be on 8 September, 11 to 12. So it's actually a free session. Anyone can actually drop by and make sure you join us because I think it's very interesting to listen to um, different kind of people, different experts um, sharing their um, life experience or knowledge in terms of the logistics and e-commerce. All right, um, so what makes our school, the Prime School of Integrated Logistics different, yeah, um, in terms of offering our logistic program? So the first one, of course, we have our Global Classroom Series. So this is where we invite global speakers, yeah. Global Classroom Series is we invite global speakers from around the world to share their experience in terms of business operation, in terms of uh, logistic, supply chain management, and so forth. Uh, we also will be coming up with our Smart Logistics Centre. Yeah, so this will be in our new campus. So stay tuned for that. This is especially for our students. Yeah, uh, students uh, from the Prime School of Integrated Logistics. And of course, we have our industry expert talk, uh, which we help regularly every semester for our students and also for the um, people who are interested to actually um, listen. Um, we also have the one-stop training center. As I mentioned just now, our sister company, the Oceanic, all right, is actually a logistic company. And we are actually quite um, um, big in the sense that we actually handle different types of logistics. So our students not only learn by the book, but they have the practical sessions, which we will train them under our sister company, the Oceanic. So students will not only learn by the book, but they have the industry experience and we have the industry infused module. So whatever that the student learn, the basic knowledge, they will apply it through the industry assessment. And of course, we have our graduate capabilities. All right, most of our students, um, when they graduate, we need to ensure that they are equipped with the necessary skills, all right, the knowledge and the skills to survive in the work industry. And these are some of uh, our collaborative partners in terms of uh, speakers, in terms of uh, industry advisory and so forth. So we have, um, you know, CILT endorsement, we have LOCM as well. And then we are also inviting speakers from uh, Petronas, Post, uh, Post Malaysia, DHL and Lazada. So these are some of the, the perks and benefits that um, students under the prime will be getting. Um, Yes, I think that's the end of my sharing session. Um, all right, sorry, I have another one more. Uh, my bad. Uh, let me share again my screen. My apology. Okay. Um, can you see this, Patia? Can you see this? Can do that. All right. So um, this is good news for those of you, um, SPM leavers or those of you who are still considering, all right, we are actually offering one free module for SPM, STPM or pre-U grads, okay, in terms of smart logistics, okay. And this, this course will actually start on 6th September. So if you want further information, please PM us, all right, at our IG or FB, or you can actually visit our website. So this is actually a free module that you can learn on smart logistics. Yeah, so it will run for four weeks, Monday and Wednesday. So, so do contact us for further information. Okay, I think that's about it from my side. Over back to you, um, Fatia. Okay. Thank you uh, for our speaker today, uh, Major Chang, Mr. Afik and Dr. Jenny. So I think this today is a good sharing. You are talking about the emphasis, emphasis of the importance of the logistic industry to the development of the country. 
moving forward Malaysia being a regional hub and then also what is the professional skill that the student needs to develop before entering the industry so I think it's a good sharing so I think that's all for today stay tuned for the next coming uh, session from the Saito uh, from the prime school so if you need to know more information you can go to the our Saito IG Saito business school IG so for the new update so I think that's all for today thank you thank you major uh, thank you Mr. Afik <laughs> Take care, stay safe. See you, Fatia. Bye. Bye. Thank you.